If you could only own one light, how bright should it be? 20 watts, 60 watts, a thousand watts? Bright lights can be expensive, and the last thing you wanna do is overspend on a light that you don't actually need. So in this video, we're gonna look at three different lighting scenarios to try and figure out whether or not this tiny 60 watt LED video light is bright enough. For this video, I've partnered with Small Rig to showcase their latest RC60B. It's a mini Cobb LED video light with 60 watts but it has something that I've never seen before. Most 60 watt cob lights either need a wall plug or sometimes you can run them off of external power. But this guy doesn't need either of those because it has a built-in battery. But more on that in just a bit. You've probably seen a light like this before. It's a little LED panel. It's also battery powered. When you turn it on, it's got white light mode. It's also got color modes or different crazy effects modes. But the problem is that this is only five watts. So is it bright enough? The first thing I want to do is test this in an actual shooting scenario to see what type of difference it makes, if any at all. In this example, I had my friend Taha take a photo of me with no lighting, just the ambient light that was available. Rich then grabbed the mini LED panel and turned it on at full brightness. And it definitely makes a difference, but when you compare it to the light that is over my shoulder, like the light that's giving me that edge light, you'll notice it can't really compete. And what happens is I end up looking too flat. Like, yes, it got rid of some of those shadows, but it's not really giving me the look that I'm going for. Now, it might be hard to tell, but because I'm sitting on this couch that is very red, it's actually giving me this red undertone or this red color cast. And the problem is that that throws off the white balance and also makes my skin tones look a little bit unnatural. So we need to fix that, but I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. If you zoom in on this photo and you look at the specular highlights, those are the highlights that are kind of occurring on my forehead. Like they're not very flattering. It kind of makes it look like I have oily skin. But if you compare it to the natural ambient light version of this photo, you notice that there are no specular highlights. And that's because as soon as you introduce a direct small light source, it causes all of those highlights to occur in the reflections. Now, if you were to swap that out for a larger 60 watt light source and then add some sort of diffusion, some way to soften the light, all of a sudden those specular highlights go from being like pinpoint sharp to spreading them out a little bit so they're not as harsh. With the 60 watt light, we can also get much brighter, which helps add some dimensionality to my face. Or in this example, how adding in additional lighting takes us from like a side split lighting to more of a soft Rembrandt lighting. Neither one of these is right or wrong, but knowing which you prefer means you can custom tailor the lighting to your subject or to the style of photo that you're trying to take. So then what about that mini light? Do we just throw it away? How should we use it? Now I wanna hear from you. I wanna hear what you think. If you have one of these mini LED lights, how do you use it in your videos or in your photos? Or maybe you don't use any lighting at all. Leave that comment down below and I'll show you how I would use this light in just a bit. Now most of the time when I'm filming in this setup, I'm either using a 100 or a 200 watt light, which in this case would be something like the Small Rig 220B. So let's switch it up and see if we can actually use that 60 watt light to light up this whole setup. When I first started shooting photos, I had no idea how important lighting was, even for the small things like adding an accent color or adding a highlight to my subject. It's one of those things that you don't realize you need until either you try it or until somebody points it out. Like for this right here, we're using the 60 watt light as our main key light, but you may have noticed earlier as well as right now that I have something going on right here. Kind of like how in that earlier example where the window light was over my shoulder, it was providing a little bit of ambient illumination, but it was also acting as an edge light or a hair light where it was giving me this halo and allowing me to separate a little bit from the background. The nice thing about the RC60B is that because it is battery powered, I can move it around for each of these different lighting setups. Now, that one back there is on at about 15%, which will give me over three hours of runtime. But if I wanted to blast it to 100% for use as my key light, then I'm looking at about 40 minutes or about 75 minutes in eco mode. 
Now, if that's not enough, you can still power the light through USB-C, either through a wall plug or a battery bank. Or in this case, there's also these V-mount batteries that have USB-C right on the top. Now, before we try one more setup, do you remember that mini light that I showed you at the beginning? Here's how I use it. Now, because this light is only five watts and it's not super bright, it's not really gonna work as our key light or as our main light. But because it has RGB modes, I can take it, I can hide it there, and it's now an accent light in my background. If you're like me and you mainly shoot photos outdoors, you might be wondering, well, like, why do I even need lights at all? I can just shoot the photo and then tweak the exposure or tweak the highlights in the shadows later inside of Lightroom. Now that can work really well if you're out in the middle of the day and you have lots of natural light available. But more often than not, you find the perfect photo spot, the perfect composition, and the lighting's not so good. So instead of boosting your ISO all the way to compensate and now your photo is a little bit grainy or you know lowering your shutter speed and now you have a little bit of motion blur, a little bit of camera shake inside of your photo, simply adding that additional light source can make a massive difference. Kind of like in these photos here that we shot in front of City Hall. Remember that reddish color cast that we got in the earlier photo when I was sitting on the couch and the red of the couch was kind of reflecting back up into my face? Like, it didn't look very good. But did you also notice that when we switched to the larger 60 watt light with the larger diffuser, that a lot of that reddish color cast disappeared? We shot a few more photos at my friend John's studio. And if you're in the Toronto area, I'll link all the details down below. But he has all these crazy colorful neon signs that are all different colors and all different brightness levels. And in this case, we want the color to be in our photo. We're not gonna get rid of it. We're actually gonna use it, but we need to use it creatively or in a way that's flattering to our subject. The challenge is that sometimes the color is so strong that it washes out all the details and the contrast in our photo. So all I did was introduce the white light to create contrast and to allow my subject to be maybe a little bit brighter than the background or even just adding a little bit as an edge light to pull out those skin tones and just reintroduce that contrast that maybe a single color wouldn't allow us to achieve. In a less extreme example, the same thing applies when you're out shooting city photos at night, where you have some lights that are warm, 2700 Kelvin, and others that are cool, daylight balanced, and everything in between. Whether or not you plan to shoot in the city or at home or in a studio, having a 60 watt light on hand is kind of that perfect price to performance ratio where you're not spending a ton of money for some light that you don't need, but you're also getting just enough light to control the lighting in each of those different scenarios. So if you only have space and budget inside your camera bag for one light, I'd say that a 60 watt light is probably a good place to start. And until the next one, go shoot photos.